second, but the Chicago Bears traded a 2023 second round pick, their own 2023 second round pick, for Chase Claypool. Joe, let's open the floor with you and your Bears love. Okay. Um, I like it. I originally was very thrown off by this trade. I did not like it, but I do like Chase Claypool as a player. He does profile as a one, which allows Mooney to be a two and puts Akeel Harry in the slot. I think that's pretty awesome setup wise for fields. We have a big slot, big guy outside and the Mooney can just be a burner there. Originally I was really upset with the, uh, the two that was what got me for it. But the Packers apparently offered a two to the Steelers as well. And Ryan Poles went with the second that we got from Baltimore for Roquan, which don't even get me started on that trade. <laughs> but we, we offered them Baltimore's number two. And then we found out that the Packers offered them their number two. So Poles said, you know what? Fuck it. Take our number two, knowing it would be a better pick and more enticing to the Steelers. So we jumped Green Bay to block them from getting a wide receiver and got a potential <clears throat> productive player for us in the process. I like it. I love it. All right. So let me get into my uh, idea of this. My fu- The funniest thing about this, and not it's not the second round pick because I, I have a lot of Bears, friend, Bears, Bears fans friends. That's weird. I don't know. Um, but I will say the funniest thing is it seemed like they were the sellers all day. Everyone was like, they traded Roquan a few days earlier. Or not, we're sorry, they traded Quinn earlier a few days, and then they go to Roquan, and then we're like, what? Only a second. And then they go buy Claypool with a second, which turned out to be their own, which I do I do love that they jumped uh the Green Bay Packers on that. But I actually do like this a lot. I like this for Fields because they need to develop him. Um, I love that they took the chance on all these wide receivers in the offseason, and I feel like everyone was like, oh, it's dumb, they're all trash. You know what the cool thing is? They found out which ones were trash, which was most of them, which is unfortunate. But Nikhil Harry actually has shown something, and I think that he, along as the third guy, would be a lot better than just the second guy. And you put a lot of big body receivers out there for him. I've never been a huge fan of Claypool ever since the three touchdown game against the Eagles a long time ago. Yeah, you guys were wondering how I was going to work that in. There it is. Yeah, um, I was waiting for it. But honestly, like the three of them, Mooney, Claypool, and uh, Nikhil Harry running around out there, not to mention throw Velas Jones in there a little bit. I actually really like this uh, offense now. I mean, I know the line has problems, but. Okay. Uh, now that we've gotten the happy part of this out of the way, let's get to the bad part of this, which I have had this loaded up. Um, a. I mean, I guess this is a positive. Finally, they're getting youthful wide receivers. I mean, Chase Claypool is younger than Vilas Jones, so we'll start there, where I'm glad they finally are bringing some youth into the organization. Um, my problem, Chase Claypool has a year and a half left before they have to pay him. Why would you give up a top 50 pick, possibly, to get him on the team? That doesn't really seem like a good idea. I think the Bears still need an actual number one wide receiver. Claypool is still a three at best, I think, on this offense. I think Mooney is a two, Claypool a three, and then you still need an actual number one on the team. I will give you this. Claypool is better than any other player they have on the team, but was it enough to give up a you know, a rookie that you could have brought in a receiver in the draft to, you know, I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know if that was a good idea or not. And I just I get that they want to see from fields now, but it's just you've already kind of like committed to a rebuildish type season like i don't know if seeing i don't know if paying that price to see what fields is this year like if you weren't already planning to do that anyway like not drafting players to get to that level not signing anybody of you know real actual like let's see what he's worth talent like you know what they but jacksonville did with christian kirk for example like you didn't do anything like that i i just i don't know why they did this really I, the bears this seems like a very odd move in my so- eyes I want to hop in on this because I had the same initial reaction as you did. But if you look at the free agent market coming up next year, Jacoby Myers is probably the top guy. I think you would say. So instead of us going out and throwing Christian Kirk money at Jacoby Myers, we flipped a second, which is an unproven player. Not saying that rookies aren't valuable, but we secured Chase Claypool and we can probably bring him up, bring him back on a cheaper deal. If he does work out for us, I like it. I mean, that's my biggest thing is looking at the free agents next year. We do have the most cap space in the league and that's awesome. But do we really want to blow it on mediocre players or can we get a mediocre player with a, a pick? Was Play the, sec- was the, the second right pick for Baltimore not available on draft night? Like when they're doing the draft, like could they not have been like, Hey uh, Steelers, here's a 
second round pick where maybe you just send Claypool back because you're not going to re-sign him after this year. Like, why not do that? I don't understand why. What was the urgency of right now and giving up? Well, like I said, there's essentially no, a first round pick because it was there. Honestly, I mean, you can float a second rounder out next year and or in the draft and maybe not get anything. I think Claypool really unlocks this offense for what he does around the line of scrimmage. He's decent at blocking, and he's a big receiver. So I like the move for Fields, and I like it for the Bears. I'm not ecstatic about it by any means, but I don't hate it. Uh, Josh, Josh. Josh, Josh used the raise your hand feature on Google Meets. Um, no, I just want to say real quick, get back to Billy's uh, argument of Chase Claypool is the best receiver on this team. I feel like everyone just kind of forgot that Mooney's a good receiver and is the product of a really terrible offense. No offense to the Bears but this only unlocks Mooney to have more down the field shots. And I, I, I agree with Joe in the aspect of Claypool on this team. Once again, I don't agree with the price tag. I think the second round pick was a little much, but once again, that's what people were offering. Um, Claypool does offer a big body who is a little bit more proven than Nikhil Harry um, and can actually do some things on the offense. And yeah, maybe they don't sign him in two years, but you know what they got? They got a two-year rental to figure it out. And like Joe said, there's not really much in there. They can go get a wide receiver in the third round of the draft. That has not always paid off, but you can find yourself a receiver somewhere. They can also move some parts around. I think they'll be okay. I just hope they go wide receiver in the first round this year and actually get a number one on the I team, don't. which they is need, what Fields needs. Fields they need needs offensive number linemen. It's number one. Offensive well, I, linemen. They could do that, but like – you know, if you're going to evaluate Hertz, you go get him an AJ Brown. If you want to evaluate Tua, you go get him a Tyree Kill. If you want to invite, you know, evaluate Fields, Chase Claypool is not that, and he's not going to make Clay or uh, Fields. You know, you're not going to gain any knowledge, I don't think, based off of Claypool. But who knows? Maybe. All right, real, maybe real quick, just real quick. I just want to get this out there. The Bears are one win away from the wild card right now. I mean, this is, they're still playing. I understand that they sold Roquan, which I assume we're getting into here shortly, but they are still playing for the playoffs this year. So I like the fact that they actually showed some aggression instead of just being sellers at the trade deadline. So this gives them an actual, I wouldn't say dynamic offense, but a, a fighting chance for the past game, which is what they needed. And they really are like a couple games back from making the wild card at this point. So now I'm not saying they're going to do anything with it, but I'm saying they could hypothetically go on a run their division other than for some reason, the Vikings, which they haven't even been playing that well is terrible. So it's the one year they can actually beat the Packers. Although that's the problem. They have to beat the Packers. So I already lost to him once. So I don't know. True. I don't know. It's an, it's an odd plan. All right. Chase Claypool is due 673,000 this year, which I assume the Steelers paid a lot of that and 1.5 mil next year. So it's essentially it's, free. It's, minus the pick. it's <laughs> cheap. And I get that. I, I don't know. I guess I just, we'll have to see what other move they're willing to make because they're still a wide receiver one away from actually seeing what Justin Fields is with his arm because Mooney and Claypool are good second and third pieces. They're not the main focal point. I wish the Eagles had this receiving core last year. Let's just put it that way. Like this well, yeah. would have been. And they, like, you know what the Eagles did? They went out and got a number one. I understand That's, that, but two number two is it. not bad either. And I also still believe that Mooney is a number one. So I got they got a one and a two. I. 